Hey everybody, back with another unboxing. Apologies for the messy desk. I just got back to Hong Kong after a week in LA and I have to go to Seoul, South Korea um, in like four hours. So I'm gonna unbox the phone here in Hong Kong and I'm gonna have to do the hands-on when I get to Korea. Just about two hours ago, I did a hands-on of the Blue Blue S8. So now these two are Meiju phones. Oh, I'm only getting one. Okay, only one device. I thought I was getting two. So this is the Meiju M6. Okay. So after the, the Meiji Pro 7 Plus with the second screen on the back, this is slightly boring, especially considering you can get um, budget phones now with slim bezels. So these bezels are quite dated by 2017 standards. This is a budget phone, so this is a really, really bare bones uh, packaging. So all you get is a cable and a power brick. So the the packaging is completely uh, minimalistic compared to the Meiji Pro 7 Plus, which had a really cool box. I have a video of that if you're interested in checking it out, if you haven't seen it yet. Oh, this is a pretty boring unboxing. There's like nothing here. Yep, papers, ejector tool. That's it. So I will do my... My favorite part. So the spec 5.2 inch 720p display, 13 megapixel camera, 8 megapixel front, 2 or 3 gigs of RAM. Yeah, this is a budget phone. 3000 milliamp battery. So I'm usually a fan of Meiju phones because I like the software a lot and I think the camera for this should be pretty solid too but right out of the box is slightly disappointing considering nowadays you, I'm unboxing stuff like this. This is the Blue Boo S8 so you have much slimmer bezels and that 18 by 9 aspect ratio. This is a complete copy of Samsung Galaxy S8 but you know it's 150 bucks. So you put these two side by side the, the Meiju M6 is a little bit boring for now but you know what? Not, it's not all about looks. The camera on the Blue Boo S8 is quite terrible. I'm pretty sure the M6 will have a better camera. So I'll put this to the test when I get to Seoul. I have to fly in four hours. I just have a crazy ass week coming up because after Seoul, I'm going to Singapore and I'm going to New York for ZTE's uh, phone event. Okay, I'm back. So I know earlier in the video, I said I would do a hands-on of the Meiju M6. But I actually ended up using this phone for 6 full days in South Korea, so I think that's long enough to call this a review. So first things first, the Meiju M6 is a budget device. This thing sells for $699 or $899 RMB. That's only about $105 or $135 US dollars, so you can have this thing for $100 bucks basically. So you have a 5.2 inch LCD display with a power button underneath it. At the bottom of the device, you have one single speaker grill and a micro USB charging port. On the right, it's a power button and a volume rocker, a headphone jack at the top, and a SIM tray on the left. On, on the back of the device, you have a single 13 megapixel camera with f2.2 aperture. So overall, build quality is pretty impressive considering the phone's only 105 bucks. You do get a metal back. You know, remember last year the M5 had a pretty cheap plastic back, so a metal back is a win. Since the phone only costs like 105 bucks, you really can't expect powerful internals, and the M6 obviously doesn't offer that. So what you have is a MediaTek MT6750 chip inside with two or three gigs of RAM, and either 16 or 32 gigs of internal storage. So that's not a powerful setup, and uh, the phone is a bit slow. Now don't get me wrong, it's not laggy and it doesn't like freeze on me, but just when you load apps, you see like a noticeable delay before everything loads compared to other phones. 
So if you used uh, Meiju's phones before, you know that Meiju has a very unique way of getting around Android. So as you can see, there are no navigation buttons, you know, the triangle, circle, and square. Instead, there's a single button that does everything. It's a home button, it's a back button, it's a fingerprint reader. So how it works is you physically click on the button to go home or you tap on it to go back. So you single tap to go back or you physically press on it to go home. To bring up recent apps, you swipe up from the bottom of the phone or from the display to bring all your apps up. So now unfortunately, because there are no navigation buttons, you do lose out on some of Android's uh, traditional shortcut features, such as in Android. One of my favorite things to do is double tap on the square button to jump between apps. So you can't do this on the Meiju M6 because there is no square button for you to double tap. You also can't go into split screen mode because again, there is no square button for you to long press. So the M6 runs Android 7.0 with FlyMe 6.7 on top. As you can see, there is no app drawer, so all your apps sits on the home screen. I'm not a big fan of that, but overall Meiju software is good. You can bring down a notification shade by swiping anywhere on the screen, for example. And if you go into settings, Meiju is really good at giving you a bunch of gestures, such as double tapping on the screen to turn on the phone, or drawing on the screen when it's off to launch apps such as camera, or Facebook, or Instagram. All this is customizable. You can launch anything, so it's quite useful. The M6 also comes with uh, this toolbox app, which has been available in other Chinese phones actually. So you can do basic things like turn on the flashlight or you know use it as a compass. These are pretty basic functionality, but you can do some cool stuff, such as use it as a level or a spirit level to check if something if your table or, or desktop is balanced. You can also use it as a ruler, which is pretty cool. I can see this coming into handy. So about that camera, considering that the M6 sells for only a little more than 100 bucks, the camera is really damn impressive. It focuses fast, and the camera app has various shooting modes including manual controls, which lets you um, adjust shutter speed and ISO and all that, and also comes with a very goofy beauty mode that will whiten your skin, make your eyes bigger, slim your face, and all that other shit for people who like selfies. Photography. If you have good sunlight, the shot will come out very impressive color accuracy is good details are high and, you know just overall a very impressive camera considering this is a budget phone but what most impresses me is low light photography now don't get me wrong the m6 if you take a picture at night it's not gonna beat a a low light photo taken with the samsung galaxy s8 but that's not a fair comparison this phone is 100 bucks so if you compare the m6 to other uh, chinese phones budget Chinese phones like the Dookie Mix, the photos here look way better at night. Alright, let's look at some video samples. So video test of the Meiju M6. So I shot this video in 1080p, which is the max uh, resolution, at 7pm in Korea. So the sun was uh, setting already and the street was actually getting dark. So considering that, details are quite good. There is no OIS obviously. So consuming media on the Meiju M6 is uh, pretty decent. The 5.2 inch display, it's only a 720p panel, so it's not the most crisp display out there. And obviously the bezels around the screen is quite large, so it's not like it's the most immersive experience. The single speaker grill is also pretty weak, so you can, you can muffle the sound very easily. And even when it's not muffled, it just doesn't get that loud in max volume, so overall, this phone is okay for consuming media. It definitely doesn't look as immersive or, or cool as other budget devices such as the Doogie Mix. Battery life is excellent as expected because the screen is only 5.2 inches and 720p resolution. Um, it doesn't use a lot of power, so in a week of using Korea, I was able to get almost five hours of screen on time every day from the 3070 milliamp battery. So overall, the Meiju M6 is probably the best budget phone out there. I mean, yes, you can get sexier looking bezel-less phones from companies like Liegu or Doogie at a similarly low price, but those phones have mediocre cameras that really suffer at night. The Meiju M6 
takes pretty damn good photos at night. And overall, the software, it's just more reliable because Meiji is a bigger company than a Doogie or a Liegu. So at 105 bucks, this is quite a bargain. Thanks for watching.